So hello everyone. I hope you're doing amazing and thank you so much for join, joining us today. My name is Iris and I'm a sociology and psychology double major and I'm also one of the TAs for the School of Social Sciences. I am a transfer student just like you. I transferred from Santa Ana College and I am a fifth year student. So welcome to our PA Q&A. During this panel, students will have the opportunity to ask questions. It can be about anything. For example, how remote classes work, clubs, remote learning, um, even course insight when applicable. If you have any questions, please feel free to write it down on the chat. We will be answering questions out loud on a rolling basis, but don't worry, we'll get to you. So just a quick disclaimer, unfortunately, we are not able to answer questions regarding your housing, application, financial aid, since that's not in our, that, that's out of our expertise. However, we will try our best to answer those questions and refer you to a link for further assistance. So before we begin, I would like to explain what a peer academic advisor is. Uh, a PAA are students just like you. We go through a quarter long training to help students with scheduling, scheduling classes, learning about majors, minors, general academic questions, academic resources, and even about UCI life. So today we have 10 PAAs with us, including myself, who will now be introducing themselves. So whoever wants to go ahead and start. Um, hello, everyone. Um, I am also a peer academic advisor. Um, I'm also a transfer student. I transferred from uh, Long Beach, but I'm not from the Long Beach area. I am from Southeast LA. Um, so uh, besides a peer academic advisor, I am also a foster student professor. Okay. Hi everyone, I'm Christine. I'm going to be a fourth year and I'm a double major for psychology and political science and it's nice to meet you all. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Sam and I'm a third year majoring in business economics and minoring in our history. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Hello everyone, uh, my name is Jessica. Oh, sorry, Waylon. Oh, it's fine, go ahead. <laughs> Uh, hello everyone, my name is Jessica and I'm a fourth year double majoring in uh, quantitative economics and data science. It's nice to meet you all. Okay, hi guys, I'm Waylon. I'm a transfer student and a peer academic advisor. Um, I'm a fourth year and I I'm a psychology major. It's great to see you guys, or well, not see you guys. <laughs> hi everyone, I'm Olivia. I'm a third year student and I'm double major in economics and data science. Hi everyone, my name is Marimar. I'm a, going to be a fifth year and I'm a double major in international studies and public health policy. Very excited to be here with you. Hi everyone, I'm Catherine. I'm a fourth year psychology and sociology double and I'm excited to be here with you today. Hey, I think that's all of our PAs. Thank you so much for your introduction. Um, so now we're going to briefly go over your degree check for political science. So just give me a quick second so I can share my screen. Okay. So can you guys see it? So here is like a, like a sample transfer um, doc that you guys would kind of similarly, similarly have. So here we have the student's name, the ID number. Um, and on the left hand side, we have the UC intro level writing. So we see that if you have the Getty, you have like, um, it would be shown here in the stars and like under the categories of writing. Um, the only thing here is that in, at UCI, you would have to um, have to take the upper division writing um, that won't be covered by that Getty. Um, and then if you go a little, if you go if you scroll down, also math is one of the things that you need to take here at the social sciences at, social sciences at UCI. Um, you would have two options, either math 2A, 2B, if you have taken stat 7, if this person, for example, has taken that seven at their prospective community college. So it would be here in a, in a star and then it would say the course number that would be kind of like the course number at the community college. Um, 
And then if you would take this, this route, you would be taking map to A and map to B. Um, if not, um, you would be taking the, the, the stat series, 10A, 10B, and 10C. This is the most um, common route um, students take when they take their math courses. And here it would be indicated in red. So for example, here it says F20. So this is the, the projected course for fall, fall 20. And then when you go down to um, number category number six, you see here language, you can see I get the, that it's fulfilled by I get the, and similarly down. Um, and then we'll, we'll get to number nine and we'll see that you'll have to take a mandatory social science um, computer technology requirement, which um, most often is social science 3A. Uh, and then we'll go straight to the middle. And then you'll see here like um, American history, uh, five, lower division courses and here you can see how um, there is some course of our scars meaning um, this course was taken at another institution for example your community college um, it, it would be uh, for example one in your community college and then here equivalent to UCI would be 21a um, and so on and then here you would see um, the 71a that's the projected course for fall 20 and then moving down here, you see the three upper division courses in political science module. Um, it, it's detailed, it, it's explained detailed here um, how you would uh, go about that. So it would, you would see the module, you would choose one and then you would choose courses pertaining to that module. Um, and then you would go down to, four, to number 12 in the middle here. Um, you would take upper division, um, four additional upper division political science courses of your choice. Upper division is 100 and up. Um, and then here would see it would have another like um, uh, useful information on the star here. And then to American institutions, here you would take three additional social school of social science courses. And again, you see how the equivalence of, of Anthro 1 would be to 2 B, and either it's lower division or upper division, I believe this is lower division. And then UD meets upper division social sciences, school of social sciences. And uh, here you have social sciences, um, the courses that are in the social sciences, like anthro, chip, econ, um, so on. And then it will explain again what upper division is, lower division, the course is 199, upper division 100 to, 100 to 199. And then more useful information here that you guys should really read your, your degree checks thoroughly and see all these notes, the maximum two, two, even two, four unit courses numbered political science 188, 199 may be counted towards the major. Um, all courses for the major must be taken for a letter grade to graduate. You must have a minimum of 2.0 GPA overall, a 2.0 GPA in your major, and then so on in your upper division courses. Uh, these are all very important notes that you guys should be really taking into account when um, at your degree check. Um, and here, it would say, tell you how many units you need to graduate. And then the, the minus completed units, the ones you completed, the remaining in progress, and estimated units to complete to be um, uh, shown here. Um, and here, I think that's pretty much it. Um, if any of the PAs would like to add anything else to the degree check, um, actually, can I add something really quick? Yeah, maybe? go ahead. Mm -hmm. So I'm not a poli sci major, but I do want to um, include this just because I've seen this a lot on other people's transcripts. So the star, the star means, again, you've taken this in your community college. That means, for example, with what Iris says, 1 equals 21A. That means please do not sign up for 21A at UCI. That'll say, it'll say, oh, you've already taken this course and so on and so forth. And then you're good. it's not going to be a good, good idea. Just drop, take another course. Take like, for example, um, 11C instead, or 41A. Just don't take 21A, 51A, 31A, whatever it says on your transcript. Try not to double up. Yeah, thank you, Leland. Um, So if you have your Getty, don't forget to send that in, or if you have a partial Getty, that's also something that should be priority to send in. Um, and yeah, so anything else you guys would like to add? Um, yeah, um, I just want to add that, um, so as of right now, your units and like the classes that you took are not updated yet, um, but don't worry, um, this is all being processed uh, by the admissions office. It is going to take some time, so your patience is really appreciated. 
um, everything should be updated hopefully by the sixth week of fall quarter. Oh, thank you so much, Karen. Okay, so yeah, so um, if you, if we're gonna go ahead and um, put in the chat the uh, link for the email for transfer and the social site edu for admissions and you could have those emails in, in place if you need to send anything to them and yeah so we're gonna go ahead and start our questions one second to stop sharing my screen sorry keep you second <laughs> i talked about How's everyone doing on the PAs? Good? Is, are you guys in a, in a cool spot? I'm hot. It's really hot here. Okay. So, okay, so we're going to go ahead and start the panel questions. Um, first off, I'm going to say, let's see. So for the, mostly for the transfers, um, how did you adapt at UCI as a transfer and how did you feel? What did you do and how long did it take you to adjust? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and answer that just because I'm already having four. <laughs> um, the thing that I used to adapt to UCI, it wasn't easy to be honest, because at first it was very ambiguous as to what, what to expect of the courses. I mean, I know what, what college is like, we all know because we been community college, but UCI is quite different. I mean, bigger lecture halls and Know, you have to make friends kind of like you have to introduce yourself <laughs> in order to make friends you didn't need it um you know there's not there's not that much like interpersonal communication if you say at first um but um i honestly like just threw myself out there and i um, made friends by just you know saying hey like how do you like this course like you know just insight on them and just kind of like go through there um and then it says how, how long how how do I feel? Well, like I said, oh, kind of like scared at first, but you start getting used to it. You just like, throw, I suggest you just, even though you're scared, like just throw yourself out there. Everything's gonna be okay. It's, pro, it's part of the transfer process. I mean, I didn't transfer with anyone. I had to make my own new friends at first, um, but it was really good. Honestly, like it yeah, has been the best experience I've ever had. And I'm really appreciative, appreciative of that. Yeah, whoever wants to go there. Um, so for me as a transfer student, so like academically, I, it took me about two quarters to get used to um, the quarter system, just because like everything is a little fast paced. It's 10 weeks, unlike the semester system, which is 16 weeks. Um, but like, I guess like my own study skills that I got from like the community college, like really helped me as well as like buying like a weekly calendar to like write up by deadlines and crossing them out. Um, socially, it was a little bit more difficult just because like I was like very shy um i cried <laughs> um however like joining clubs and like talking to my housemates um they that really helped me out a lot just to like get out of my bubble and also like talking to them because they were here um since like their freshman year like they know they knew a lot of like resources that helped me out and uh yeah that's what that's why it took me to adjust i feel like everyone already like gave a good answer <laughs> Um, I mean, for me as a transfer, I, I think for me, it was really overwhelming and it was like a rush because like going from a community college to um, university, I'm like, oh, it's going to be an easy transition because I already know how college is like. I already know how everything's going to go. Like I have like this edge against like the high school students. I'm wrong. I was wrong. <laughs> I was totally wrong. When I got here, I was not used to the quarter system. I'm like, I have a midterm in my second week. I have a paper due in a week. What is going on? I'm like so confused. Plus the campus is huge. It's like, for me, I got lost all the time. I would end up in the wrong classrooms and it was a mess. For, to solve those problems, one, definitely agree with Karen, get a planner track all your deadlines, track all your midterms and your papers. Please don't procrastinate because if you do, you're going to get lost in this abyss of procrastination and then you're just going to be in a total mess by the end of the quarter because it goes by really fast. 
Um, another thing to not get lost in campus, I use Zot Finder and Google Maps to find my way around, which honestly for me was a lifesaver. Plus they showed where all the bathrooms are, which I'm like, thank the Lord. <laughs> um, I think the last thing I would maybe say on a personal level, I felt kind of lonely as a transfer just because when I took a lot of the introductory courses, like since I'm a psychology major, I had to take 9B and everyone were freshmen and they already knew, oh, they knew most like who they were. A lot of them were dorming. So they already had their group circles and I felt kind of left out at the time. Cause I'm like, I just got here. I don't know what's going on. I'm still trying to transition into this university. Oh my gosh. How are people already making friends and how am I so behind? Honestly, again, as Karen said, join clubs make the effort like literally making those connections really actually helps the process both in an academic way and in a social way um yeah i wasn't that social either when i first got here i was more focused on studying but at the same time uci university is not all about academics it's also about you know getting your social circle making those connections and honestly that's what really helps me transition into university Thank you, Waylon. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the second question. It says, how did you get involved on campus? I kind of touched on that. What clubs, orgs are you in? How can students get involved? So I'm gonna like chime in first since I'm have four again. So I am a part of the Latinx Student Psychological Association, Association known as, known as LSDA. LSPA, in essence, is its academics, research, practical experience, leadership, and community. And overall, the goal is to enhance the college experience of dedicated students aspiring to serve underrepresented communities in the mental health area. The main goals are also to build a sense of belonging and development for an academic family to ease the college experience. This, this um, club is not restricted to psychology majors. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Everyone can join. So I would say like really um, go out there and search your clubs and orgs. There's a lot of organizations at UCI. Um, get a Facebook, even though you don't have, maybe you might not have one, everyone does. Get a Facebook, even just for like um, club purposes. Um, that way you can get informed and involved, especially right now during quarantine. Like that's the best method of communication. And even Instagram too, email, check your email. And you can also, you're not like obligated to join when you want to get like involved in a club. Like it's, it's appreciated, but you know, you can try it out and test the waters and then see if you like it or not. You know, you're gonna, you're gonna have, you, get, you have to find your niche, your niche, you know, you have to find your, your, your the thing that draws you. So yeah, that's my advice to that. I'm gonna go ahead and um, uh, provide the link on the chat and just so you guys can check it out. I guess I'll jump in this time really quick. So first off, I just want to say if any of us, like if you're interested in any of the clubs we talk about, feel free to PM us, or I don't think you can PM us. You can put it on the chat or something, ask us about the club, and then hopefully we'll provide a link or more information about the club. As for me, I'm in Tomonokai, which is a cultural and social club uh, for Japanese and Japanese Americans. Um, you don't have to be Japanese in order to be in the club. It's just as long as you appreciate the cultures, you can be in our little families, which I honestly enjoy. Um, I'm also part of the Ant Eater Studio Audio Production Club, which is pretty much audio production, uh, mixing and mastering tracks, uh, learning how to make music, so on and so forth. And I'm hoping to be a board member this year, but we'll see what happens. Um, I'm not sure if Iris really touched on this a lot, but usually we have this anteater involvement fair, which is pretty much um, in Aldrich Park, we'll have like this giant row or just columns of clubs just lined up everywhere, over 600 of them. So there is definitely at least one club you should be interested in. Um, I'm not sure if I'm correct, but I think there's gonna be a virtual one this year just because we are in quarantine. Um, but definitely get a Facebook if you want to find more information about a club. Um, I don't know if Iris posted the link for, oh, not yet, I'll post the link. Um, I'll post a link as to the 600 different clubs and organizations you can look through. Get a Facebook, definitely DM them um, for more information, meeting times, so on and so forth. And yes, there are still meetings even online. Um, for me, we're meeting mostly through Discord, but I know others meet through Zoom and 
Facebook and so on and so forth. So please make the effort, please join a club. Uh, so like Waylon said, uh, there's definitely, well, there's definitely going to be an, uh, a virtual a AIF this year, so an inter involvement fair. Uh, hopefully, I'm not exactly sure how it will be held, but I know that there will be one virtually, so that'll be nice. So uh, if there's any clubs you're interested in, hopefully they'll be there at the uh, virtual fair. Uh, one organization that I'd really like to promote is ASUCI, which is our uh, kind of like student government for UCI. It's basically like ASB in high school, except on a much larger scale because it's college level. And since all of y'all are like poli-sci majors, there's probably definitely a lot of positions that you might be interested in uh, because we definitely have different branches of ASUCI. I was in student services, so we did more of the kind of like on-campus events, but there's also like the uh, judicial branch, there's the Senate, all that sort of stuff. I'm going to drop the link down below. Um, another organization <laughs> that I like to promote, I'm not in it, but I have a friend who's in it, is Mock Trial. Um, and she, I, was, I was her witness when she would uh, practice with me, so that was really fun. And that's just another organization organization that you can definitely look into if you're interested. Anyone else have something they want to share about their involvement on campus or how they can get involved in their club? Okay. 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 Um, yes. As for me, I'm in a women's family first year club when I was like freshman year. Yeah, and I got it in the NHRA involvement fair in fall quarter, and I got trainings every week, like every Tuesday and Thursday for three hours each time. And it's a pretty fun club. Like every sports club always have like team dinner or um, competitions in weekends so you can have the team bonding and it's, yeah you should really check out the sports club and it's really really fun I'll mention my own too um, as for me I kind of just joined stuff like I started getting really involved during like my second year and I honestly just went towards stuff that like drew my attention things that I was like like I wanted to do, be part of organizations that made me feel like I was giving back on this. Um, so I became a mentor, I became a peer health educator, um, which is a position I'm still in now. So as a peer health educator, like once you apply and you get in, um, you go through like an interview process, you get trained for like a quarter, and then you could stay in that position for the rest of like your academic career at UCI. So it's literally one of my favorite positions like ever that I've been in just because I've been able to meet some of my lifelong friends there. And it's just like, you know, we promote wellness on campus. I engage in volunteer experiences um, at UCI. So we have like the ZOT Health Fair, which is our annual health fair. We have De-Stress Fest, which is held like um, in finals week. Um, so we have like these type of um, different campus events and we engage in outreach, workshops. Um, we do like reading and all that type of stuff. So it's very cool. Um, we have like focus groups, like we have wellness, emotional well-being, sexual health, nutrition, um, alcohol and other drugs. So we have like a whole bunch of like um, health topics that whichever one you're interested in, you could be in that group. So you have like weekly meetings with your group, you have bi-weekly meetings with the whole team. So it's just an amazing experience. And I'll also put the link in the chat just so you can have that information and get to know a little more about it as well. Thank you, my mark. Um, okay, so I guess we're going to move on to the next question. Um, tell us about a ca campus resource that you recommend the most. What are the resource transfers, resources transfers should take advantage of? Does anybody want to chime in first? Something? I didn't want to go first again since I got, went first last time, but You're I mean, fine. I can go again. <laughs> You're fine. Go ahead. <laughs> So I think I talked about as transfers, it feels way more rushed compared to like if you came here as a freshman, just because you had four years, we have two to three years, depending if you're, if you want to stay as a fourth year or a fifth year, um, do whatever you want. But for me, I was like, I already have to figure out what my, what I want to do with my life. I only have two years. Oh my gosh. How am I going to solve all these, you know, solve all this mess? How am I going to do all this? How am I going to, cause I've never had like an actual job before. And for me, I was like so lost. 
So honestly, I definitely vouch for the Division of Career Pathways. Um, they're the main source for UCI career resources, and they have things such as job and internship postings, and they have a bunch of tools and resources that you can take advantage of. Personally, for me, I took advantage of their resume workshops as well as their mock interviews. As I said, I never had an actual job before, just like little like tutoring jobs. So I'm like, oh, how am I going to, you know, how am I going to prepare for a job? What am I, what should I prepare? What? kind of questions are they going to ask me? What's the best kind of answers? You know, that type of stuff. They were actually the ones that introduced me to the PAA position. They're like, oh, if you're interested in being an academic advisor, you should definitely try the uh, PAA, your academic, you know, thing. So I'm like, oh, wow, that sounds amazing because they will talk about, you know, all the job and career opportunities you can have in the future. So being able to talk with them, um, get some advice, clean up my resume, which honestly, take advantage of. They're the best at that. <laughs> um, honest, that's honestly how I got this job, and I can't thank them enough for having me as a peer academic advisor. Um, so, oh, go ahead, go ahead, sorry. <laughs> um, so one of the resources that I recommend uh, to transfer students is the Transfer Student Hub. Uh, so for example, it consists of like many other programs and like one of them is called the first year transfer experience program and uh, they provide workshops, LARC scholarships, which is for tutoring so you wouldn't have to pay, uh, book loans, discounted printing, printing and like so much more. Um, and then in case you're like struggling or you're on academic probation, um, there's the transfer triumph program. And uh, just to quickly mention, if you were in in the foster care system, like former or current foster youth, um, there's also a program called Foster Youth in Foster Youth Resilience in Education. Um, so it doesn't matter what age you were in the foster care system, uh, they will still accept you. Unlike community colleges, who only accept um, students who were in the foster care system after the age of 16. Um, so yeah, the Transfer Student Hub. Use it. Anyone else? Okay, I guess I'll just, um, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Amara. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted yeah. to mention the Writing Center just because I've used it multiple times and it's like a center that I didn't really know at first until I like did investigation. Um, so it's very cool because you could actually set appointments with them. Now that we're like in quarantine, you could actually do Zoom appointments during the quarter. So they could like take a look at an essay or a scholarship application. So it's very cool because they give you really, really good feedback. Um, just of course, you do have to get it done a little earlier and you could go like um, multiple times just to make sure like your paper is really good. Um, but I totally recommend it. They're very nice. You just, I'm gonna put the link in the chat as well. So you could have access to that in the future if you ever want to use it. I will just quickly add, um, I would definitely reach out to both TAs and professors, especially since everything is going to be online. So you can't like walk to an office. So everyone's going to usually be holding virtual office hours. So definitely take advantage of those, especially if you have questions, they are more than willing to help you. And um, I just would say, don't be too afraid to reach out because they really are there for you and are great resources for not only the class you're in, but like um, opportunities if you want to get involved outside of the class with a certain professor or just learn more about um, like if they're doing research or anything about that. They have so much experience on a wide array of topics that they are like hubs of just information. So definitely utilize them. I would just um, briefly also add, sorry, um, which is Social Science Academic Resource Center. It's everything in its name, Resource Center. It's, um, uh, so you, it helps you with academic and professional growth. Um, it's open to any majors. It gives you resources on a graduate school um, for uh, resume, uh, look over one-on-one -on -one consultations for a study, pay, study space, computer and print, printing services, uh, resume, resume, CV, and cover letter critiques. Um, they're very great um, in my experience. Um, I learned a lot when I uh, had my first consultation there. So they help you with everything in, in regard to that. And even like grad school, if you're planning to go to grad school, it, it, it's a great kickstart if you go to start. Anyone else have anything else to add? Okay. So um, you recently experienced remote learning at UCI. 
which is which is an is on a quarter system. Tell us a bit about your experience and best advice. Um, so I'm gonna go first. Uh, I'm gonna say that my uh, best advice coming from a, a kind of a procrastinator is don't let your studies like um, go like pile up and then you have to go over the material like in one sitting because that's very stressful and not very good for you. Um, that's one of the best advice that I can give because even though you try for that not to happen, it happens sometimes. So you're like, oh, if it's pre-recorded then I can just watch them like on a day, but it's really exhausting and you should really, really consider your mental health in that, in that sense because um, I've tried doing that by experience and honestly, it wasn't the best thing cramming everything up in one day. But, um, you know, like Waylon and everybody else mentioned, um, it's good to have a, a planner, plan out your weeks and just act like you're still going to school, you know, like if you want to even have like a hypothetical, like I'm going to school thing and just like really like um, concentrate on like your studies. Um, but then also take breaks too, because that's like the, the main key during this time too, because remote learning, it, it kind of takes a toll on you after a while, but yeah. Um, adding on to what Iris just said, uh, I would suggest uh, keeping track of your email notifications, especially uh, in the remote learning setting. Professors and TAs usually communicate with students via email or the announcement tab on Canvas. So please uh, check that like regularly, possibly like twice a day or once a day. Yeah. Yeah, remote learning isn't what a lot of students expected because me too, because I expected that the lectures that were pre-recorded at least, if it wasn't live, that they would be um, sent out for us, like the students to view on like the day and time of the lecture time we signed up for, just like we would be going to like the physical location of the lecture and listen to it. But that's not it. So um, professors are having like a more difficult time like recording these things and they have their own like things they need to handle during the pandemic and all these things happening too so it's a period of adjustment for everyone is what I want to let you guys know the professors are not you know omnipotent like they don't know everything about this, this new technology because we never had to use zoom before for the most part so um, just be really patient with your professors and your instructors and your TAs because they're trying their best um, so yeah, I would just say keep track of all of the lectures that you haven't been able to view at the time, whether it's from your own personal time or because the professors haven't released the lecture videos yet. Because um, sometimes, like I had times when like the lecture videos were like not sent out until the next week or like even longer after that. So I had to just keep in track like how many lecture videos I was actually behind on or else you'll forget and sometimes you'll skip over a video and that could have been really important like review for a midterm or for a final or something that will be on one of your tests or exams. So I would really keep track of that and I would really say keep a planner too. Um, the days tend to blur together if you're in the same house and like the same location especially if you're studying like the same location, like studying the same place is really useful because it keeps you in the mindset of like, this is my lecture hall, like this is where I get my work done. And then you could go somewhere else to like rest, you know, and then release your stress and come back. But it's also um, inconvenient in that you kind of lose track of time. Um, like Iris already mentioned, take care of yourself, take your mental breaks because I needed more of those than I did when I was physically back on campus since it was just so different, like the world hasn't experienced this kind of learning before. Um, so it wouldn't be a surprise if you find yourself having a tougher time adjusting to this type of remote learning. So don't be too hard on yourself. Um, whether you're a transfer student or just like the incoming freshman student, you guys are kind of in a similar boat as like everything's like so new now. So don't feel like you're behind. Everyone else is feeling the same way. Um, I want to mention a bright side of the like remote learning. Like you can like a lot of professors will have pre-recorded like videos or recorded videos, so you can like um, like double speed the video or you can pause the video if you have any confusion. So you can totally learning the materials on your own pace. So and also the most important thing is if you have an eight a.m. class in the morning you don't have to like get up at that time and you can like study the materials in later afternoon I guess so yeah it's the bright side 
Um, this is just like a little tip I'd like to add. I'm not sure if someone else already said it, but just like for me, um, during the remote quarter, I really like to still get ready for the day. Uh, just because at first I didn't get ready, I would just stay in my pajamas all day and do my work. And it really just got me the mindset that I didn't need to do my work or I was at home, you know, and I was just relaxing. It's a weekend, but it wasn't. It was like, you know, a quarter, a school quarter when I had work to do, when I had midterms. So just actually like getting up and getting dressed and like, you know, washing my face really helped me um, be more motivated to actually do my work. I'm not sure if anyone else does this, but I like to keep phone alarms. And I also also have this kind of friend support group. So like during certain times of the day, my friends will come in and they're like, hey, are you on your phone right now? If you're reading this text, you're on your phone. You should get off <laughs> and do your work. Um, honestly, that helps me a lot because once I get on Twitter or YouTube, I don't stop for like another five hours. <laughs> so honestly, phone alarms and keeping a support group other than the planner. I find is really helpful. Yeah, I agree with everybody too. Like what I would do sometimes is I would have like FaceTime or Zoom study dates with my friends. So like they would like be watching me as I like did work. And like if they saw me on my phone, like they'll be like, get off it, you know, because I need that like um, accountability. Um, so like if you as the school year progresses and you get to meet people, you know, why not make a study date with them, get to know them better, um, your friends at home or just like, you know, just make sure that you have that communication with people because I know there's like less social interaction, but definitely make time for yourself, make time for your friends. You know, as my, my fellow PAs have mentioned, like breaks have those days to yourself um those are really really important to recover like your strength to continue going um but just know you're not alone be patient with yourself we're always here for you um and feel free to always email us and contact us for any questions or any tips or anything like that just to really quickly echo the communication um i don't know what everyone's situation is but if you are staying at home or even if you are living with like friends or housemates or whatever um make sure you have an area of like open discussion because being around people a lot, especially since no one's going to be really in and out as much can drive you up a wall. I, I moved back to my house with my family and I value my personal space. And so sometimes if you don't communicate with them and say, Hey, I just need like a minute to myself, I'm going to go in my room. It could be taken wrong or just, you know, just really don't be afraid to tell people what you need because it's too hard right now to like accommodate everything and for everyone else and not accommodate yourself. I mean, don't just like blow everyone off. Like everyone should accommodate each other. So have that like give and take and a nice balance because if there's too much pressure to be like around everyone all the time, I know that I don't do well under that. I need alone time. I need quiet. My family's not quiet. So, you know, just take a second to yourself and uh, make sure that communication is open. I have one more thing to add. Just one more thing. You know, when Catherine talks about that alone time, I'm like, yes, that is that is exactly what I need. Thank you, Catherine. <laughs> um, but yeah, talking about speaking about communication, like please, like this is a lot of students think remote learning is like kind of disadvantage like to them, but it's really like there's a lot of advantages to it as well. I know like as a transfer student or like incoming freshman too, like you guys probably don't really want to speak to your some of you guys don't want to speak to your professors as much or your TAs as much because you feel like it'll be awkward. Let me be real with you. My first encounter was super awkward. You know why? I was really unfortunate because I didn't realize that this professor, like that day, no one showed up to like office hours. And so I would just like one-on-one -on -one talking with her. And that was like my very first like professor, like student chat. And we were just like sitting in silence sometimes. And I was like, oh God, help me. So yeah, after that, um, I started talking to my TAs a little more. And so TAs are a good way to start off, like trying to figure out like good ways to talk with your professor. Cause they're like, that one step under, you know, it helps you like forge that formal communication style. And they're really chill too. And then once you go talk to your professors, it's really chill too. Like a lot of them were like, what did you have for lunch? Like, did you guys like the lecture? And if you didn't, please tell me why. Just tell me you didn't like it. Like, I don't care. Like, I want to learn from it. They actually really do value students input, which really surprised me as like a freshman. And then as I grew older, like, or, you know, as I aged, I guess, yeah, like throughout the years. <laughs> Um, yeah, it got really nice to talk to professors. I actually really, really enjoy talking to them now. And um, it's just because like they have so much to tell you and it's really interesting from all the research they've done. I would really say um, take, take advantage of the situation. 
if you're planning to go to law school, you should really like consider talking to your professors more or your TAs more during this time because a lot of students will um, actually don't come to discussions lately, I feel like, because it's like online. So they don't really feel the urge to go. It's like more awkward for people. But during this time, more than ever, professors and TAs will remember the students that made the extra effort to go to those office hours when the others didn't because they all know it's new and it's new for the professors too. So it's really nice to them since they're like, oh, it's new for me, but like there's someone out there who still wants to like talk to me, even though they know it's scary for students too, because it's all new. So make sure you also go talk to them and build that rapport between you and them. And actually thought, um, I'm going to get a lot of recommendation for law school from a professor. I forged a relationship with like a good relationship with like last quarter and that was during remote learning. So you might find the professor you hit it off with. That if it's okay, I just want to emphasize really quickly, um, if this was already mentioned, I just want to like really, really mention this, but definitely please take breaks. We're, I know we're all online and we're all in quarantine right now, but like Zoom burnout is a thing. If you sit on your computer for like hours on end, you're going to die. <laughs> like, it's just like, you're going to have this feeling of dread. You're going to be unmotivated. And honestly, everything's just going to come crashing down. Please, I beg you, take breaks. Watch anime like me. Talk with a friend. Watch a video. Um, go outside and take a walk or something. Get some vitamin D in your system. Do whatever you need to do. Just please take a break. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Aylin. <laughs> um, so we're gonna move on to the next question. Uh, for PA who dorm or live near UCI, how do you commute around campus? What were the advantages and disadvantages? Uh, for me, I live off campus. I live at home in Santa Ana, so just a couple minutes down. But um, honestly, the only um, the advantage was like, I live at my home, you know, that's a whole family space. Disadvantage, like most of the, my fellow PA said, um, your own space, like your own study space. Now, since we're in remote learning, like we have to be at home and family, like sometimes it's very uh, distracting, you know, like, you know, it's kind of hard to kind of balance it. But I mean, take your time and it's okay to be, to be kind of mean, I guess, selfish and say, leave me alone, you know, let me have my own time. Trust me, I do it even, and I don't really care. <laughs> especially to my siblings I'm like just get out of here <laughs> um and yeah like to like in terms of uh, when you're on campus when you eventually hopefully go back um you know uh you can use, utilize thought finder I mean I use that when I um was on campus I was pr pretty overwhelmed the first time I landed there I was like where's my class like there's this huge building you know sometimes the numbers or names are hidden um you know behind trees and stuff so I would really recommend to kind of like get familiar familiar with the campus, even though we're not on campus. Go through the map, go through these apps. Um, and it's it's available for Apple and Google too. So it's like you can download it and just look at it and look at all, where, all the, where all the resources are at and all that good stuff. Yeah, so that's my take on it. <laughs> oh, and like, and then the only downfall will also be like parking. It's really expensive, but I guess I'll just, you know, everyone just cries along with that. <laughs> If it's okay, I'll jump in one last time yeah. just because, I mean, Iris, you said that you commute from home and I'm like, same. I mean, it's great that I don't have to pay for rent because I got my family and I have food readily available for me. Uh, disadvantage, yeah, one, uh, siblings, trying like knocking on my door, trying to play Animal Crossing with me and I'm like, I'm studying, <laughs> please, I'm working. Um, I think the other biggest disadvantage, at least for me, just because I am commuting from home, I'm traveling back and forth, like back before the quarantine. I was going back and forth on campus, driving all day, and I'm like exhausted. So by the time like, oh, look, there's a club at 6 p.m., I'm like, oh, I'm so tired. I don't want to go. I'm so drained. I've been driving. I don't want to, you know, waste my gas and go there, right? Um, honestly, though, make that effort. If we do go back on campus, do it. It's worth it. Getting that little social interaction because I'm not living at the dorm. I don't have this, you know, these group of people I come back to every, like, you know, with like friends, unfortunately. <laughs> so honestly, socially, it gets a little harder for me. But if you make that effort to go to clubs, um, even though you're tired and you've been commuting all day, 
do it. It's great. It's great. Um, also, I don't have a car. I have my mom. Thank you, mom. But I know that there's an Anteater Express, which is such a bus system. I'll let someone else explain it because I think they would explain it way better than I ever could. But I think I'm done talking now. I talked too much. Okay, yeah, I did. Oh, no, Christine, you can. I'm so sorry, man. Okay. <laughs> I want to send people off. Okay. Um, yeah, I lived in Camino do Sol. So actually, Karen lives there right now, too. And it's like a really cool place. In house, dryer, in house, washer. That's just beautiful. Um, yeah, it's one of the ACC homes. You'll find out about it more later if you haven't heard about it now. But basically, um, they're just off campus housing that's tied with UCI. So they work with UCI, so technically UCI housing. Um, it's really good housing, but if you want to go to um, back onto campus, don't worry about it. There's something called the Amphitheater Express, which is basically a bus. All the fees are paid. You don't have to worry about paying to get on or paying to get off. Like, you probably already paid all that in your fees. <laughs> and then um, I, when I was like a freshman, I was, or like a sophomore or something, yeah, when I was gonna use the bus, I was like looking up, how do I get on this bus? And like, how do they verify me? So they're like, you need your UCI ID card. And I had it already, okay? And it was like in my hand to show and no one else before me was showing your UCI ID card. So you don't have to worry about it, just hop on, like they don't verify. Um, and yeah, it's really great because there's like, so basically if you live in ACC housing, there's like bus stops, like one, two, three, or like one, two, like depending where you are. And then um, if you have, if you download something called the Rider app, it basically shows you all the stops like that the Antheater Express, like the line will stop at or like they will go to eventually. And it also tells you the time frame of like when they'll reach a certain stop or when they're going to leave soon. So it's really important that you download that, especially if you have a, if when you like go back to campus and you have a night class, because the buses take a lot longer to come to those stops. Like sometimes it takes even like 20 minutes I waited or a little longer because of like traffic and then like less buses. So it's good to know when the bus is coming because sometimes I felt like it was never going to come and I was like worried. So relieve that stress and download the app. Um, and it also takes you to fun places too, like over the weekend, there's like, it takes you to a mall in Irvine called Spectrum Mall, and it also goes to Diamond Jamboree, I believe someone also mentioned. I didn't know that. So yeah, um, Diamond Jamboree has a lot of good food. It has like a Korean market, like H Mart. It has a lot of good bakeries, a lot of good drinks, boba drinks, lolly cup, um, BCD, a tofu house, like ramen places. It's really good. You should check it out. So yeah, it's a good resource. Um, so unfortunately, during the fall quarter, the Anti Express is still going to be running like for campus, but it's not actually going to be taking you to the off campus spots. But that will definitely, you know, be back up and running when we're back on campus. So you should look forward to that. Uh, but like Christine, I lived in ACC housing. Well, I'm going to live in ACC housing. Last year, I lived in Arroyo Vista, which is basically still in the same location as ACC housing. Um, and I use the bus system. I also sometimes just walked to and from campus because honestly it was only like a 15 minute walk and it's really pretty so sometimes it was really nice. Uh, the advantage of living over there is because since you have to you know uh, buy food for yourself and all that sort of stuff there is an Albertsons right across from you so you're able to go get groceries. I didn't have a car so I did walking get groceries but it really wasn't that bad. Um, sometimes I would go like two or three times a week just to get food uh, you know for dinner and stuff. But also another really big advantage of living on campus is being able to meet people um, just because even if you're not living with an actual roommate, there's still people living around you. And definitely during, you know, fall quarter and stuff like that, uh, there'll be people who are reaching out just saying, hey, like I noticed you, you know, live down the hall from me. Like, how are you? Do you want to hang out? Stuff like that. So that was definitely a big advantage for me, especially my uh, freshman year, like my first year at UCI. Uh, okay, thank you. Um, so we're going to move on to the Q&A questions on the chat. So we're going to start with Jeffrey. Um, how do you send in the I get see? Um, for that, you're going to have to email uh, off, you're going to have to email to um, people. So let me check that for you. Um, one moment. Uh, 
where is it? I'll put the, the emails in the chat, but you're going to have to email the office in admissions and also uh, the school of social sciences. I'm so sorry. So while that one happened, um, we can probably move on to the next question. Um, so it says, okay, it says, what poly political science clubs or organizations are available? Okay, I think that's more specific to my major, political science. Okay, <laughs> I looked it up just for you, whoever asked this question. Um, yeah, so during my time in undergrad, the most highly raved i've heard about organization for um poli sci is um the pre-law society so it's basically i'll read off the benefits for you it's literally online with me right now so um, it's networking opportunities mentorship with uci law students lsat preparation guidance law school admissions guidance attorney guest speakers panel socials as you can tell like this is very law school oriented because i haven't personally encountered any other person like in poli sci that isn't interested in law. So a lot of things we talked about were about law, so I'm sorry, like, but if you're interested in looking up like political science clubs, organizations, you can also just type that up in Google, like political science, like clubs, organizations at UCI, like specifically, and it should totally be like something. Like there's a lot, there's 600, over 600 clubs in UCI, so that should not be a problem. If you're still like interested maybe in law, there's also something, um, called the pre-law outreach program. So it's basically a program that helps disadvantaged um, background students um, have more LSAT law preparation materials, which is just the entrance exam to get into, you have to take to get into law school, um, like the SAT basically. And then it also tells you like the application process and it has like guest speakers and all that stuff. And I hear it's really useful. Um, I talked with, um, actually worked a panel with someone who, who was our guest speaker at the time last year and he was the one who ran the thing and it was very um, resourceful even I learned a lot from it personally so I would highly um, recommend you check it out if you're interested in law but yeah sorry it's like so specific. I think um, okay there's another question by the same um, student um, do, did any of y'all do honors for political science how does it work how do you get involved um, I don't know if Christine you have any intake on that <laughs> honors anyone no <laughs> so fortunately we don't have any intake on that but maybe we can look it up on the website and we can also answer his other question he has another question um, how do you get into work the work study program um, do you guys any that anyone have work study um i have work study um for that uh you would check your financial aid award and to see if you got awarded the work study um if you accept it uh, you would just kind of like look for on-campus positions that you know amazingly i feel like almost a lot of them accept like or prefer work study students um, you would just let them know once you apply or once you're in your interview, um, et cetera, and then they'll handle the rest. So just accept your award and then just actively look for jobs um, on campus for sure. That's, yeah, that's what I did for sure. Thank you, Mari Mar. Um, and then he said, oh, a dumb question. There's no such thing as dumb questions. <laughs> but will virtual classes require attendance in a specific time, like 10 a.m. to 1 20 p.m or 12 p.m um i think that when they indicate a time i think it would be a required for you to attend as opposed to like it just being there there's no there's no time listed i don't know if anybody had like a, an experience with that honestly it kind of depends on the class i mean for most of the classes I have right now, a lot of the lectures are pre-recorded. So even though it says, oh, we're meeting at this time, in 
literally means with pre-recorded lectures, you can access it whenever you want to, as long as you do all your like assignments, papers, deadlines, midterms, by the assigned due date, please do those. You should be fine. For other classes, I mean, I think the meetup, I know for, for example, there was a discussion that I had to attend and I literally had to show up on Zoom for an hour every Thursday to do presentations and stuff like that. Honestly, best to look at your syllabus, ask your teacher possibly, um, as for what, how the class works, so on and so forth, just because this is a more online platform and I can't say for sure that, oh, there's going to be pre-recorded lectures or you have to meet at this time. It literally depends on the class and your professor. Uh, like, <laughs> Sorry, uh, like Raylan said, it really just depends on the class and the professor. Um, a lot of professors do hold the lectures live, but also recorded. So if you do prefer to go to lecture um, in person and at least be able to kind of ask questions if you have any during the lecture um, or just be like, you know, more present or something, that's definitely an option. Uh, the only class that I had that was mandatory for me to be there in person at that time was my language class. Other than that, all of my other classes uh, were recorded. So that was an advantage. I would personally not worry too much about that right now because sometimes actually over the summer though, if you go into your Canvas course module, um, if your course is already listed on there and you're able to access it, some professors and instructors upload the course syllabus earlier than um, the week or the day that your class will actually start. So you can keep checking back on your course, um, I mean, not course syllabus, sorry, the Canvas module for that class if it's um, available to you and one, or once it becomes available to you, um, sometimes they just upload the, um, the syllabus early. So just check on that if you want. Um, just don't worry about the time like right now or like if it's pre-recorded or live just because it will definitely tell you all that stuff on the syllabus um, it, Because the syllabus outlines for you just everything that will happen in the class the textbooks you have to buy like what edition of the textbook The grading criteria everything about that course will be on there um, But if you personally are like really worried about it, you can always email your professor that should also be on the canvas um, course modules Dang, I keep forgetting the word the syllabus. Yes, it should be also on the syllabus um, don't be afraid to email your professors or TA. They're always happy to help you. Um, they are not there to intimidate you. They'll actually be really happy that someone is like interested in the course so early on. So yeah, if you have any future questions about the course before it begins, that's really concerning to you, you can always reach out to them. I definitely agree. Always have good communication with your professors via email. They're usually very responsive. Um, so we have another question. It says, do you guys work outside of campus? Like, do you guys have a job that doesn't tie with UCI? If you do, do you guys have part, have part time balancing work life and school life? I can definitely answer this question because last year I had a job outside of UCI and I live outside of UCI. So um, honestly, it was pretty tough, like in terms of traffic and in terms of like getting on campus because you still have to park and walk to your, cl your classes and then like you have to be mindful of all those all that time too um if you get a job make sure it's not like really close to your class that you're gonna take or maybe like work around your classes because i honestly i thought i was superwoman or something and i like i took on like uh course, like work and then like left like an hour before my class started and then I had to like rush over there and it's like yeah it wasn't great for my mental health also because like i had to really like run over there and not have to take my time like other students like walk to your core class and kind of like mentally prepare yourself to learn you know but um yeah like i i suggest you kind of like work around your school schedule and not around your work schedule because um yeah prioritize school because it's very important but also work because it's, it's important too but um, yeah, like uh, don't work too much too. Like don't over overdo yourself. <laughs> but yeah, that's my take. I don't know how valid this answer will be because it's not about me. Um, I know a lot of friends or a couple of friends who worked outside of UCI and still did like full time and everything like at UCI. So in freshman year specifically, like I remember this one guy I was friends with and he worked at this like sushi, like poke bowl place. And it's definitely not tied with UCI. You had to drive there and it was still nearby. It wasn't even like very far, just like 15 minutes or like 
you know, that kind of time. So it wasn't far. Um, so he took on the job and he was really, really committed to it. Like he really, like he needed the money and like he was really trying hard to make it work. But he realized that it's just too hard to balance with like academics and his non-UCI work schedule. Because um, if you work at UCI, the really good benefit is like, um, your supervisors try to work around your ed academic schedule, but if you work outside of UCI, um, they say, they might say during the interview, you know, like, and they might mean it too. They might say like, um, we're going to work around your work, I mean, academic schedule, like we'll try to be flexible with you, but there's no guarantee. Um, and really, like, I think the most, the biggest time that my friends um, stopped working outside of UCI is because it was during um, finals week, almost finals week or like midterms week, and they realized um, they just have no time to study, like, really for those exams because their bosses didn't really, you know, care about their academic schedule. And it makes sense, you know, because if you're working outside of UCI, then those superior, I mean, those superiors, those supervisors have, like, a, like, a, like, a reason to not really have to care about your academic life, you know what I'm saying? Because they have their own business to run and they can't just go around the students. So yeah, just keep that in mind, I would say. Another friend of mine worked at like a mall nearby at like a shoe department and she's still, it was really chill, she said, but even though it's chill, like she still had to drop out because she still had to be there for the work hours, even if no one was like, you know, asking her questions and making her work per se. So there's some benefits and not too many good benefits for both sides. Just to echo both um, of my PAs who answered before me, I have I worked far away my first my freshman year and it was very hard. I had to get um, like everything had to be planned out perfectly, otherwise you'd either be late for class or late for school or late for work. So if you're planning on getting a job outside of campus, definitely take um, commuting time into consideration because sometimes around. Um, UCI can get very really backed up because a lot of people drive or when people are coming on campus, I don't know about now, but like if you have to take a freeway, try not to have to take a freeway just because like the freeways are super bad. Um, I used to have to drive to work and be there at six. So I was like right in rush hour. So avoid that if possible. Um, similar to both, again, my employer did not really work with my schedule. They're like, sorry, like you're our employee, like everything you do is like external to us. That's not our problem to figure out. We, you owe us hours. So like it was kind of give and take with very little give and you were more of like at their beck and call. I don't know. It just depends. Maybe just don't work where I worked. Um, also another thing, it's not a paid job, but if you want to get an internship around campus, also take that into consideration because that, because I had an internship in Santa Ana. So again, I had to take the freeway. I'd have to go. So you have, I don't want to deter anyone, but really consider time management for classes and time management with like transportation, because if any of those things get like too intertwined, it's very hard to untangle them. Just speaking from experience. So just be careful of all those things. But if you need a job, then like definitely don't let that get you down, you know? It's possible, it's just harder. But you're all at UCI now. You clearly have a great work ethic. So, you know, I'm sure you could do great. Just do better than I did, because I did not do great, so. Uh, okay, so I guess we can move on to a question. Um, that's pretty much pending. <laughs> How can students get involved in research? Are any of our PAAs involved in research? Um, so for me, I am not involved in research like right now per se. Oh, um, but I uh, joined the sociology honors program and that's going to be in this next academic year. So I'm very excited to do that. Um, so if like anybody, I guess, in their department wants to check out, maybe they have honors program, they can do so. Um, but yeah, like for research, definitely um, reach out to uh, faculty or professors that you may have and maybe are interested in their interests as well. And you can learn more about their research and maybe kind of join them. Maybe they have a lab. Um, but yeah, that's my take on that. Um, yeah, so like we have a program called Undergraduate Research Opportunities, 
program. Uh, so uh, they're hosting events, even through Zoom right now, to ask questions regarding research. Um, if you go to their website, um, they have a list of on and off campus uh, research opportunities. And they also have a student research interest form. So basically, when you fill out the form, you talk about yourself, your research interests, and your goals. And then after you submit it, um, someone will email you back um, to make an appointment with a research counselor if you're interested in research. So I'm currently involved in a research project with a professor from the cognitive science department, and I found this research opportunity from Europe. Yeah, just like Kara mentioned, it's uh, the undergraduate research opportunities program. So after looking at a brief introductions about the research opportunities from each department or like multiple professors, uh, I emailed the professor and asked him if he was still hiring more research assistants. So after a brief interview, I was in his research lab. Uh, so I recommend checking out the Europe website if you're interested in researching. And also, please feel free to uh, directly talk to a professor in office hours to find out his current research or uh, like your interest. You can even propose a new research topic to a professor. Um, I would say getting involved in research will definitely help you in, to improve your creative thinking skills and communication skills. So for my research, uh, it's kind of like a one-on-one -on -one research. Um, so I directly talk to the professor, but I know that there are some other research. Uh, they have a like a team-based research system. So um, yeah, just depends on what you like. You might, you just uh, talk to the professor and find out if it fits your schedule and if you like uh, like a one-on-one, -on -one, one on one base, uh, like um, research or like a team-based research. Yeah. As for myself, um, I'm currently, um, well, this past year, my fourth year, I was involved in this year long research seminar. So it, we learned about like research ethics in like fall quarter and then in winter quarter, they assigned us to a mentor. Um, and I was assigned to Dr. LeBron, who's a professor in the Chicano Latino and program in public health. Um, so I learned so much from her in winter quarter. I was able to assist her in her research project based in Santa Ana, which is like literally right next to Irvine. So it was called the anti-soil lead project. So they were just trying to uncover like sources of lead exposure to minimize like the health risk it imposes on the community. So like I learned so much about environmental justice through her, so much so that I asked her to continue being my mentor this upcoming year. Um, so she'll be my mentor since I'll be part of the public health honors research program. So in that program, it's also year long. Um, I'll be conducting my own research study and then I'll be writing my honors thesis throughout the year. Um, so I would definitely like, you know, check your emails, you know, talk to professors. You know, I'm able to have that one-on-one -on -one connection with her. She's able to get to know me a little more. So we have like those meetings, like, you know, if I were to think of graduate school, I can ask her for a letter of rec, which is a really cool benefit of research. Um, as for like honors research programs, um, you do have to apply to those. So you could get more info on that. I could look up that for you for like poli-sci majors. Um, but yeah, it's, it's an amazing experience. You know, it's an opportunity to continue learning outside of the class. So totally recommend. Okay, so we had another question. I just sent the link. Um, I believe it was, I think, links um, about the political science research. Um, I sent the link to their website. I don't know if that answered your question or if anyone else has any any intake on political science research labs. I want to just briefly talk about it because there's no such thing technically as like a political science research lab or like an anthropology research lab or like a you know, or psychology research lab. That's just like the political science is just like the subject. Um, and then what you're what should what you should be looking to research in should be a very specific topic. Like, do you want to like look up um, the economics of like 
this is like this country or like are you interested in like doing statistical things in your research or like it's just very concentrated research so you shouldn't be looking by subject i would say only look by subject if you're not sure what you might be interested in for research but you just know you're interested in research that's within that like realm so Karen put a really, I think it was Karen put like a really good link in the chat box. It was called the UCI faculty search. And if you click on that link, you could just, um, if you're not sure what you want to research about, but you want to explore the options, like the research that professors have already done or are currently conducting and under that topic, you could use that search link, just put in like School of Social Sciences and then Political Science, and then click the search button like on the bottom. And it should show you this whole list of UCI's professors um, and show you their research or like what they're currently doing or like the topics that they're interested in. So you could also look up those topics yourself and figure out what you want to do. Um, once you found a professor that you really um, seem interested in and you really um, want to talk more about their research and you're interested in participating, you could always um, contact that professor, just um, type up their email. Their email should be on the web and just be like, oh, hello, like I'm Christine, like I'm a fourth year. And I'm really interested in the paper you wrote about for this research you conducted. I really like, just talk a little bit about what you read, maybe like, oh, I really liked how you like did this and this, and it's just very interesting statistics. Um, can I meet during your office hours? Or since it's online, like you could just be like, is there, can I make like a Zoom link and we can like talk more about it? Um, and they, they could be like, sure, um, you know, drop by Zoom and we could talk about it. And after you chat it out, you could be like at the end, hey, so I'm looking for a lab and yours sounds really great. Can I like join? <laughs> and don't worry, this isn't awkward at all unless you make it awkward. So just go really casually because all professors at UCI know this pattern. Like this is a pattern that a lot of students take because it's just a sign of respect to, to that person and to yourself, like that you actually care about this research that you're going to conduct. And if you're not interested, you really should consider it again because it's also this professor's like lifelong research so um, they probably want someone who really enjoys this topic and who really sincerely cares for it so yeah and if you don't care for it like I've talked to graduate students um, who are in the PhD program UCI and they're like yeah when I first tried research just for the research credits and stuff in undergrad it was so boring and I almost didn't try doing the PhD program after that but then they actually tried to find something they liked and they really enjoyed it. And now they made a whole paper and it's like published with like different people's names. So it's, yeah, it's really different once you go through the process. Thank you, Christine. Um, yeah, so I also heard, I'm not really like familiar with it. Well, I, I've never um, done it, but I know that a lot of political science um, students go to UCBC. Uh, like an internship kind of thing and they learn a lot of things um in regard to their major and like all that good stuff i'll just put the information on the link so you guys can read about it yeah um do we have any more questions nope um you guys can ask us anything again we're open to any questions that you may have or or if any of the paas have any more like advice or even like eatery you haven't asked and nobody has asked about eating <laughs> about the food <laughs> that's one of our expertise actually <laughs> we can give really valuable insight on the food if anybody wants to chime in <laughs> just for the meantime um, I want to chime in about the um, faculty system not food but <laughs> um, so I actually just wanted to like quickly uh, oh no and, oh, never mind. Never mind. I thought I was able to share my screen, but never mind. Never mind. Um, it's not. I can. I can help. I can make you. I guess co-host, and maybe I'll make you a host for now. You can do it. You're good to go. Oh, Karen, you're muted. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so this is the faculty system. Um, like Christine said, uh, you would uh, search up School of Social Sciences right here and Political Science at the bottom. 
um, then when you click search, it gives you like a list of all the professors and their research interests, like Daniel uh, Rootsetter. Uh, he's interested in like war tradition, drones, ethics of war, early modern uh, political thought. And yeah, it's just like, it's very cool. And I use it as well. So, yeah, that was it. I really will shush after this about research. I feel like everyone's hearing my voice way too much. Um, yeah, so SARC has already been mentioned by Iris, but I was also like a SARC intern last year. So I know that there's a lot of resources that students can use. If you are interested in research, but you're not sure where to start, you know, cause I feel like research is a very step-by-step -step process. I was interested in research at one point last year too. So I did the whole research and shebang. So yeah, like it's pretty like heavy stuff. Not really heavy, just like you need kind of, I needed guidance like step-by-step. -step. I was like, hey, like where should I look? Oh, faculty search link, great. Oh, hey, how should I contact these professors? Like, is it awkward if I email them, even if I'm not a student? No? Okay, great. Okay, how do I email these professors? <laughs> like, how do you construct, like, the format of it? Like, because I was really worried I wouldn't sound respectful enough or, like, you know, I, if, if I didn't sound like I knew the research enough and stuff like that. And so they helped me format the email, too, and everything. And then I was like, great. Now where should I ask to like meet and stuff? And so they help you with everything, like every step of the way, like they really do care. And they're very good at um, helping students find research. Even if it's not through um, the faculty system, they can also um, show you other links and sources on the Europe website. Um, so I'd really recommend you search them up and just do like a consultation with them. Even if you're not sure what to ask for, it's still good to go and like, just talk to them about it because when you talk to them about it, it also gives them a clear understanding of what you're trying to say. And then they could show you things that make you, you know, understand what you're trying to figure out better. So you could try. We have a question. It says, um, do you, any of you recommend any specific political science professors, instructors, political science <laughs> major? Oh my gosh, yeah, my voice. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm the only political science major among all of us. Um, yeah, someone really popular in the political science realm is Selgren. She is so, so sweet. She is wonderful. She went to law school too, if you're interested in like probing her about like what happens in law school, like what's a good way to like study for it. And like she um, talks about her work experiences too. She tells us these juicy stories about herself anyways. Um, and yeah, if you're interested in um, doing upper division writing um, that you have to do, <laughs> then Selgren is also an option. Um, out of the modules, I think, it, I do believe it was a 71 module or something like that that I took. Um, and within that module was the upper division writing course with Selgren. And her writing course is just so interesting. Like I didn't particularly enjoy writing and nor was I very good at it, but she made me write so well after that class because she makes you get rid of all the jargon. She gets rid of all that fluffy cloud stuff. And it's actually like, she makes you practice a legal case brief writing that you would study in like law school or something like that, that you would have to write for an actual like legal profession. Even if you're not interested in law school, it's just so fun because she takes like an actual like case from in the real world and then she gives you the case to look at she's like what side would you take like do you think this person's actually should be in jail or like should this person face this or do you think the person that he supposedly attacked should be in jail instead like it's that kind of stuff like criminal mind kind of stuff it's really interesting you should check it out um and then there's also another professor called um dr sarah saris uh, I will say he's kind of book heavy. I don't know if he's doing lower divisions, but he definitely does upper division courses. I took one with him last quarter and I learned the most from him, I believe. Like out of the professors, I, he's one of the professors I learned the most out of. Just worldwide, like government structure and like even the individual people who like ran our government, like the personalities involved, um, how they clash together, how foreign countries work together. It was very, very interesting. Highly recommend him. Just know that it is a lot of book work, but it's worth it in the end. And he's there with you like the whole process away. If you want a good live recommendation too, he's really great. So thank you so much, Christine. Um, we have another question. It says, Do any of you recommend any? Oh wait, did we answer it already? Yeah, we did. Or I saw one. They probably answered it. 
Okay, so we don't have any more questions on the chat. Um, um, just a quick heads up. The question was, um, they were asking if we can book appointments, like one-on-one -on -one appointments with us. And I think um, someone already answered it, but just to oh. reiterate, uh, right now, unfortunately, during the summer, we can't. During the fall, I think we're going to have more virtual ones. But the best way to contact us right now is through our email, socialsci.paa at uci.edu. If you want to request a specific person, you should probably maybe say their name <laughs> or say, maybe, I don't know, talk about what major. Um, for example, I think there was one person in our email that was asking for a psychology major PAA and I was just like, I got this, let's go. <laughs> um, so yeah, request us, but best way is through email right now. I don't think even our live chat is open yet. I don't think, but don't take my word on that. <laughs> Okay, so we have another question. It says, do you mind writing those professors down, spelling them, Christine? <laughs> you got, okay, she got it. And this group is really like logistics, practical, as expected of political science majors, I approve. But you know, if you're interested in like show places in Irvine, like where to have fun once this whole shebang is over, um, or like good places to eat, or you know, something like that, you can always ask. Or like study methods, I suppose, like really anything. We're just here as students today, so. Pretty much, I mean, I feel like I'm gonna answer, say this every single time we have a transfer panel or any type of panel, but some person asks us about tattoos. And even though that's not in like, you know, our realm, we were just like, sure, we'll answer your question. Which by the way, no, I'm not gonna pick which tattoo you should get. <laughs> um, but honestly, ask us anything, our favorite spots, maybe favorite places, favorite foods. Um, or I could rant on about Disney and the Disney course or Disneyland for five minutes, which is totally fine. But yeah, just keep asking us questions. We literally have like, what? We still have like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, <laughs> 15 minutes. But yeah, ask us anything, literally. We have six minutes. Six minutes, yeah. yeah Never mind, minutes. I can't, I can't even, <laughs> gosh. I just want to add something like, you know, for academics, or just personal, um, you know, uh, you know, advice. Um, we are in a, in a quarter system, so it's 10 weeks. It's not the same as mostly, you know, community college, which is 16 weeks. So just be mindful of that too. Like, I think the courses are structured for like, you know, good for you to learn for an, in a 10 week period, but also like, just keep in mind that it goes a lot quicker and yeah, just keep in mind on that. Anyone have any questions? We still have five minutes, five minutes. Five minutes. <laughs> I mean, we could just talk about ourselves or food for like the next five minutes, which is totally fine. Even if we're talking, please keep asking us questions. We still have time. Um, but Iris, do you want to start like getting our contact information and stuff or did you already do that? Um, give me one second. I lost my, my document. I got you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, my God. Uh, ah, where did it go? I guess we can talk about our favorite places to go if no one's going to say anything. <laughs> Um, I would just like to like advocate for Diamond Jamboree. Please go. I, I think Christine talked about it a little bit, but please go. There's a karaoke room. There's um, an escape room. There's Loli Cup, Boba, right? Um, Somi Somi, which is a Taiyaki place, which is pretty much like um, bread, p paste or custard, and then ice cream with toppings. And it is amazing. Please go there. Um, honestly, I go there a lot of the times just to like socialize with a lot of my friends. So I definitely re recommend that place. And then once the bus system is all ready to go, uh, the Ant Eater Express, I believe, um, 
I think it goes to Diamond Jamboree. So I definitely recommend going there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> um, thank you, Waylon. So, oh, sorry, Iris, what did you say? No, no, I just said thank you, Waylon. That was good. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That was beautiful. Um, that was beautiful. <laughs> I'm like a boba fanatic. We all love boba, and like, well, we, a lot of us do in Southern California. Um, so, yeah, a good boba place is Tancha. And I, it's like for like creamier bobas, you like the whipped fancy stuff on the top. There's also like fluffy Japanese pancakes that are way much of a ripoff, but it tastes good. I hear I'm too cheap to buy it. Um, and then there's also Seven Leaves, also another creamier boba place. There's also fruit drinks there. If you guys want to hang with your friends, but some of your friends don't like boba, which, which is interesting. I'm just kidding. And then you guys could go there. Um, and then there's also, oh, Waylon mentioned this last week or a couple of days ago, I believe. And I was like, yes, everyone should know this place. It's called Classroom 302, Class 302. And basically, if you love boba toppings like me, I adore boba toppings. It's so chewy and so good. Um, it's basically like a buffet for boba toppings because <laughs> you could get unlimited ones in like this big cup and then you just fill up your drink and yeah, it's all ready to go. So you could just get as many boba fillings as you want. It's like the yogurt land of for boba. You can get whatever type of drink they have. Like I know they have slushies, they got milk teas, they got all these different flavors, and then you can put as much toppings as you want. I'm the type of person that will like stack, stack like egg pudding, boba, lychee jelly, all like on top until it gets to the, and then I'm like squish in the juice as much as possible. And then I'm like, can you please pack this? And they're like, okay. Um <laughs> But yeah, definitely recommend. I think there's two places in Irvine, one in Jamboree and another one is kind of closer to UCI, I believe, but I have to look that up. I think that other location is like by Culver, maybe? Yeah, yeah. Also, the food at Class Zero Two is amazing. I love it. So yeah, they're good for boba, but their food is also so good. So it's like a full meal there. Oh yeah, their shave ice is amazing. I love the mango one. It's so good. Okay, so we are at the one minute mark and I just want to say thank you so much for join, joining us in this webinar. It was great to answer your questions and um, I'll just, you know, say, leave it to the PAs if they want to say any last minute advice or anything of that sort. Just thank you all for coming and thank you all. Thank you so much, everyone. You guys are free to go. You guys are free to go. Bye. <laughs> Yes, we'll do great in your college years. We yes. believe in you. Remember, you're not alone. You can reach Literally, out anytime. I feel the same way as you, confused. Yes. <laughs>